Okay, stripping down the shutter itself for this Reflex S. Let's get started. There are three screws that hold the outer shutter case to the front plate here. The third of them is half hidden under this tab. If we press the lever in and swing that across, that's your flash sink lever. That clears that. We can get out to it easy, at it easily with a screwdriver. Right. So these, I'll just pop these screws and the parts as they come off into a container. That comes off the front of the case there. The components in the front of the case. There's a little idle, idle, idle opinion. Now that one couples up the motion for the component which opens the diaphragm in your lens. That little ball I just threw off there, that's the detent for the shutter speeds. And that's just the front cover plate. So there's nothing else needs to come off there, that'll just need to be cleaned up before it's put back. Consider those the outer shutter components. And here we have the shutter itself. So there's a front retainer ring here. Two little holes in the ends of it there so you can hook a tool in. Unclip it. Pop that to one side. Here's your shutter speed ring. Now the cam there, that sets the uh, sets your shutter speeds, the position of that. That little drive dog, that's what cocks the shutter. That turns that internal ring and cocks the shutter. So this little latch here, it serves a couple of purposes. It stops you from being able to depress the shutter release unless the shutter's cocked, but it also holds the cocking ring in position once it's been cocked. This comes off as a spring that was hooked over that post. This is your main drive cam here and it's spring. We can take the spring off at this point, that just unhooks. Now the relative position of the two tabs. With that tab at 12 o'clock, this one here is sitting down, right down about 3 o'clock. That's not too bad. That one's still doable. Um, in an ideal world this would be much tighter. That would be up around the 2 o'clock or 1 o'clock position. But we have to make do with what you can get. There aren't many parts for cameras that are 50, 60 years old. In many years ago you'd have replaced those as a matter of course. Right. Dismantle the flash sync mechanism. At this end there's a spring. We just unhook that now so it's not under tension and isn't about to go flying across the room and get lost. Very important to uh, be careful with springs. One of the reasons is they're extremely small and if they get away they'll be in, disappear across the room, be into the pile of the carpet and if you see them next time it'll be when they get stuck in your sock or something when you're wandering across the room weeks later. By which stage they'll be completely buggered and unfit for future use. Right, let's get this cover off. It's your flash contact. I'll just release the tension from there. This little piece should come out. Yep. A bit reluctant to come up. I think someone's been bending things they have. 
this little tab here which serves as the other end of that flash contact somebody has helpfully bent it out so it's catching things where it shouldn't be so I'm just going to push that back out of the way that's better then I can lift that component past it as I said someone had been into the shutter before and they probably had their own way of doing things which doesn't suit me right that's the shut the trigger lever really for the shutter there's a spring here and I need it off so I've just got to pull a bit of tension on it and out it comes that little pallet that little wheel we saw off there before that all does to do with the flash sink and that's what allows the uh, allows you to get your two flash speeds okay we'll take out the uh, delay action or self timer single screw let's pull that out of it that's better should we pull it off its post here we go here we have the retard gear train Got to rotate that cam to the cocked position, which takes the tension off here and allows us to get to the other spring, the other screw rather, which is right here. And that screw is in a, runs through us an enlarged hole in the bottom plate, which allows you to swing it backwards and forwards, in or out which allows you to control how much it engages with the main cam and therefore how how much it slows the action of the main cam down okay now we get a bit deeper this screw has just got two little slots in it for a tool to engage in other shutters that's just a simple screw but in this case it's been shaped like that so it forms a post that the return spring on the drive cam drive ring there that, that can hook over anyway so that's it the spring does a couple of different jobs we'll talk about that another day okay so this is the B lever that's what acts to hold the shutter open when set to B I'm going to remove this spring That's the B lever spring. Quite fine, easily lost. Take great care not to do it. There's one more fine spring here that we need to take out, and it's this one here. It's not so hard when you're unhooking it, you can keep it. Putting it back is a little bit trickier. Okay, so basically, that's all that comes off the top of the shutter at that point and at the base of the shutter we've got the back of the shutter we have three screws they are countersunk screws in this case in uh, many cases they won't be um, they may just be a cheese head screw and there may be a rectangle, a um, flat bottomed recess there where they bed into it. So there we go. That comes off. This comes off. Now this is for setting your uh, self timer or your flash speed and that should just unhook. It's a bit of a wriggle. It's got a wriggle out through from here past the flash post and out of there all at the same time so it's entertaining you'll be able to do it three screws hold the outer case to the mechanism plate they're countersunk screws in this case they're identical to the ones that were used to hold that plate on the back 
so you don't need to worry about where they go that's pretty self-evident okay so now we're going to split the case here's the outer case there's not an awful lot in the outer case there's just a flat plate here if the shutter had been somewhat different there might have been a diaphragm under there but the diaphragm and these cameras is in the lens instead not much to do here apart from make sure this is very clean before we reassemble it and I always check those screws to make sure they haven't backed out any extent if they were loose they could back out catch a shutter blade and stop the whole thing from working so there's your outer case here we have the inner case and blades so here's the cover blade number six that goes straight over the first blade over the position where the first blade went and uh, cover blades like that were used quite commonly for shutters where the camera had interchangeable lenses because it meant that when the lens was out of the camera light could strike the shutter blades at quite an oblique angle and potentially at least penetrate between the blades at an angle and hit the film okay so there's our blades off there so there's six blades in one of these shutters the two odd ones are the second blade and the sixth blade the second blade is cut away because the back of the second blade has to clear the shaft where it comes through here none of the others need that and the last blade is the cover blade and that's just small not much more to remove here now three three screws hold the lens ring on these are unusually tight this means whoever was in here before was unusually enthusiastic about doing screws up All right, that comes off that comes off the main drive cam can come off and that's the shutter stripped down ready to be cleaned and reassembled